Welcome into another episode of the Bellhaven Football Coaches Show. I'm Kenneth Nash. Joining me, as always, head football coach here at Bellhaven University, Blaine McCorkle. Coach, a big win this weekend. Thanks for taking the time. Big win. Thanks a lot. Blazers are off of another road win in North Carolina, a 20-7 victory over Brevard College this past weekend. Uh, a big-time win that secured the first-ever eight-win season in program history. We're at the part of the year where records are starting to fall. We're going to talk about some of those. We'll look at some highlights, talk about the game, talk about Senior Day, Maryville coming up. Uh, lots to talk about on today's show. But let's start with Brevard. Uh, another trip to North Carolina. You went 3-0 and in the state of North Carolina this year, uh, which is really impressive because that's a bit of a trek. Uh, this was a close game. Brevard's a really good football team, and you really had to grind this one out. Can you just talk about you know being able to win close games after, frankly, over the past couple of weeks, you've been able to kind of win handily. Uh, this was a four for four quarter football game. Yeah, it really was. Brevard's a good football team, and you know, first you got to give them a lot of credit. They had a really good game plan in all three phases. They executed at a high level. They're big. They're fast. They're physical. Um, and they are really, really good. You know, we mentioned some of their losses early in the year were to some of the better teams in the country. So yeah. we knew going in that it was going to be a, a dogfight. And, um, you know, I'm as excited about this win as any we've had. You know, a couple mm -hmm. people send me texts or messages after the game. They talk about, hey, still ugly win is still a win. Well, yeah. I thought it was a beautiful win. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they, there's no such thing as an ugly win. And, um, you know, the, the few weeks prior, we had beaten some people handily, and that's fun and that's exciting and all that. But there's nothing, no better feeling than having to fight for four quarters and gut it out and, and come away with a win. So really proud of what our guys did. Yeah, you, since you say the beautiful win, we talk a lot about complimentary football, and, you know, we've seen it in that the offense has been really good and the defense has been really good and special teams have been really good all around, and you've, you've kind of pulled away from teams. Uh, but it also means that on days maybe where your offense isn't putting up 70, uh, that your defense is still, you know, practically pitching a shutout gave up just seven points uh the defense was spectacular special teams made some massive plays that really set up two scores for y'all uh, can you talk about those two units um because uh, at the end of the day when you kind of look at the numbers and look at the game uh those two units really put you in a position to win yeah they really did special teams of course uh contributed to two touchdowns yep. you know one one play after on a block punt and the other on a block punt um, and that those units as a whole did a great job mm -hmm. all day you don't want to talk about the punt blocks and stuff like that but uh, all six phases of the kick game were, were pretty stout as the day went on and we're really excited about some things that happened there the defense was spectacular you know gave them one drive there before uh, the end of the first half and other than that played extremely well exp extremely tough um, had a really mature presence about them on the sideline at halftime mm -hmm. that we were really excited about, and they just kept plugging. Um, and then the complimentary part, the offense didn't have its best day. Again, mm -hmm. give Brevard a lot of credit. They did some things differently on defense that we hadn't prepared for. They did it really well. Took us a while to get going, but at the end of the game, when we needed to find first downs, we were able to gut out some first yeah. downs. So we were at our best when it did matter the most. So. Um, all together, just a, a great team effort and really excited about it. Yeah, and it's interesting because you mentioned the offense when you needed to make some plays, they did. Uh, and I thought they did a really good job kind of overcoming adversity. That's kind of a cliche you hear in sports, but uh, it was not as easy going as it has been in recent weeks. A couple of turnovers, uh, just you know, struggle to get the run game going like it has been. Um, so seeing them kind of have the leadership and the mentality to keep fighting uh, and knowing late that, hey, you know, we may not need a score, we may not get a score, but if we can hold on to the football, take some time off the clock and, and really put Brevard in bad field position or whatever, uh, it's going to be a, a really important thing. Uh, special teams was really important. We talked about that. Two blocked punts by Connor Fordham. Uh, he's the USA South Special Teams Player of the Week. Uh, we talk a lot about him on defense and, and what he does is kind of the uh, one of the quarterbacks of your defense as, as that middle linebacker. But uh, he plays on special teams a lot and makes really good plays. And uh, you know his blocked punts, like you said, set up two scores. Yeah, they did. He, he's uh, he's just a football player, just yeah. all the way around. And, you know, we talk every week in here about uh, in-house we give our player of the game, and this week was the first time ever we've given it to the same guy in two categories. Yeah. He was our defensive player of the week with 18 tackles, and then he was our special teams player of the week with two block punts. Yeah. And just a phenomenal performance all the way around. And for a guy who knows that his football days are numbered, he's truly soaking up every bit of it, yeah. you know, and it's really – uh, neat and admirable to watch a guy that just loves the game and goes out there and competes. And he's, you know, to watch him at practice during the week, you know, if, if he's uh, not exactly locked into something, I saw another day down there taking a tight end rep yep. <laughs> during, during some individual drills just because he's trying to soak up as much football as he can. Yep. And that's pretty cool and pretty special to watch. But, um, you know, the special teams is an area a lot of people maybe put some down the line guys in and stuff like that. And we put some young guys in there too, but they've got to be guys that we trust. And that's yep. why Connor Fordham plays a lot of special teams. And um, that's a third of the game. And we're going to make sure we've got the right people out there. Yeah, and from a team perspective, real quick, uh, eight wins. That is 
first time that Bellhaven has ever had eight wins in a, in a single season. Uh, it is the second straight year that you have secured the winningest season in program history. You went 7-3 and three last year, which tied the seven-win record, but uh, a better win percentage, uh, seven wins in ten games. They've been playing 11 previously. Can you talk about what that means for the program? You now have three straight winning seasons uh, and two, you know, two of, frankly, the best seasons uh, that this program has seen. Well, it's big. It's exciting. And, you know, one thing that we talk about all the time uh, as a team is that we want to be a program of sustainable success. Yep. You know, and you see a lot of teams pop up and have a good year here and there, and that's fine, and then they disappear again. Well, we don't want that. Yep. You know, we talk about building for the long haul and um, building for the future as we go. So it's exciting to see that we've, we've built something special here, and we're seeing that it is sustaining itself. So uh, now the challenge is to stay there, you know, mm-hmm. because it's, you hear people say all the time, it's not about getting to the top, it's staying on the top. Um, and, you know, winning eight you know, is the best season in school history. Well, now we got to win nine. Yeah. You know, there, there's a new thing to shoot for. There's mm-hmm. always something more uh, to work for and, and, and more goals to achieve. So that's what we're going to try to do. I'm interested. We're going to talk about senior day a little bit uh, later on. But uh, it is the final home game of the regular season. Uh, hopefully not the final game of the season. But uh, the fact of the matter is for a lot of these guys, uh, 11 of them, um, this is going to be the last time potentially uh, they put on those pads, they put on that jersey, and they step on that field. Uh, what do you think it means to them to be able to go out and you know if if they can get a win on Saturday, go out with uh, what is what is going to go down in the record books as the best win program or best season in program history? Yeah, I think it means a lot to those guys. Um, yeah, there is eleven seniors. I think six of those guys were in our first class here yeah. at Bellhaven. Some other ones have come in uh, along the way that we've picked up, and we're glad they're here too, and they've been a huge part of our success. But for those. I think it's six guys that have been here all the way through. Uh, you know, their first two years here, uh, they had two eight, two and eight seasons. Yep. You know, and then they start off zero and two in the spring season before it flipped. So that's a group of guys that started their career here four and eighteen. Yeah. You know, if they win Saturday, they'll leave here twenty three and twenty two. That's so how awesome is yeah. that for those guys to be able to say that they've made that big of a turn in their pro in this program, uh, and they're the ones that went out there to play to do it. Yeah. So it's pretty special and it's pretty neat. Uh, so this will be a, an interesting senior day for a lot of people because there's a lot of people. We're recognizing this Saturday that who've invested a great deal into this program, mm-hmm. um, and we really appreciate them for that. Yeah, it's going to be really, really fun. Make sure to come out. We'll, we'll talk about that game a, a little bit later on. But let's go ahead and look at some of the highlights. Uh, not quite as many as we've had in past weeks. Uh, uh, we put every scoring play on there for anybody that wants a little behind the scenes. Uh, when you're putting up 60 and 70 uh, week after week, there's a lot of scoring plays. So not quite as many, but a lot of really good defensive plays and some really important uh, ones on the offense. This was early on. We get started on the offensive side of the ball. Brooks Brimer, who's been an absolute weapon at tight end for y'all. Uh, in the passing game, he's also a great run blocker. Uh, he makes a really good catch here. It runs a really good route. He's wide open, um, but it was a really good schemed up play, and, and Tim Johnson sells it well, and Brooks is right there for the catch. Yeah, Brooks has been a staple for us on our offense for a while now at tight end, and this was a really big play for us because, as I mentioned, they did do some things uh, schematically differently that uh, caught us off guard, so we wanted to try to just, just run a little boot here just to get him out in the flat, just a simple play to get away from that box find him open, and he makes a nice gain here to get us a first down to keep a drive going. Yeah, it was a really impressive play, uh, drawn up well. There's actually, you can see a couple of guys uh, that were open on that play, so it uh, really worked out well. Uh, defensively, TJ Hersey had a really nice game, and uh, he's had a really, really stout Bellhaven career. He gets the pass breakup here. This is a record breaker. Most pass breakups in a single season. Uh, he breaks his own record, which he set in 2019. Uh, he's a ball hawk, and, and he loves making plays, uh, getting in there, being a physical corner, and, and just really uh, just being a, a menace to the passing game. Yeah, I'm proud of TJ for what he's done. You know, he's uh, he, we, we joke a lot. He's not the biggest guy on the field, but he definitely plays like he is. Yep. You know, and it's neat to see him go out there and break his own record. Uh, he needed one, I think, to break it, and he actually got three pass yep. breakups in the game. So he didn't break it. He he broke it, and then some. He was leaving, no doubt. Uh, and then he's still got a game to play this week. Yep. So, and the beauty of it is for TJ, he's just a junior, so he gets to try to do it again for a third year next yep. year. Yeah, it's going to be really impressive to see what his end of his career pass breakup stats are. Uh, here he's in the run game making a nice play. Uh, reads it well, gets in the backfield, breaks one up uh, on third down. A nice tackle for loss here. Yeah, when you see your corner coming up making tackles for loss in the backfield on third down, you know as I mentioned a minute ago, he, he may not be the biggest fit guy on the field, but he sure plays like it. And that's a good, physical, clean uh, tackle by TJ right there. And he's just, you know, he plays out there on the corner, but he's a complete football player. And that was a big stop for our defense there early in the game. Yeah, it's about as textbook as it gets, waiting for the running back to make his move and then just wrapping up the legs. A nice play. Uh, the offense did make some big plays. This was probably the biggest 62 yard touchdown pass to Jacoby James Grace. Uh, there was an offside play here, so you got a chance to kind of take a free shot. Uh, and uh, uh, Tim and Jacoby James Grace really connect well uh, for the score. 
Yeah, this is something that we practice a lot. We've practiced it all year, and this was the first time. We, it took us nine weeks to be able to get to that situation. Uh, but they jumped, and, and our guys, we just sent them down the field and take a shot. You've yeah. got the free play, and it worked out. So our guys executed it really well and was proud of uh, the preparation all year long. You never know when opportunities come. So there, there's a lot of uh, just standard operating procedures, we call them, throughout our, our playbook that you never know when you're going to get to. But uh, they were ready when it happened, and, and we got the big play out of it. And uh, excited two weeks in a row to see Jacoby James Grace with a big long touchdown pass. Yeah, he's really started to come on here late in the season. Uh, Eli Webb is a name we talk about a ton. He's the uh, USA South Defensive Rookie of the Week this week. Uh, that'll be coming out later Monday. Um, but uh, he makes a nice play here, gets in the backfield, comes up with a sack. Uh, he, I believe, leads the conference in sacks currently uh, as a freshman, which is just incredible. Yeah, he, he's a phenomenal freshman. We talk about him on here every week. Another sack for him. I think he does lead the conference in sacks, as you mentioned. Um, great play by him. They did a good job with their pass protection. It took us a while to get some rush, but he just keeps working, keeps working, and finds his way to the quarterback uh, to make a big play for us here. Uh, when we look up here in a couple weeks, if Eli Webb is not the conference defensive rookie <laughs> of the week, there needs to be a federal investigation because he has put together as stout a freshman performance uh, as I can ever remember in my career anywhere. Yeah, you had some really good rookies step up. Uh, he'll, he's three-time Rookie of the Week. Uh, Landry Huddleston got it twice. So over nine weeks, Bellhaven's been the defensive Rookie of the Week five times, uh, which I think bodes well for your future uh, moving forward. Uh, here's the punt blocks, and, and uh, we'll start with this one. This one uh, was the first one. Uh, it was recovered for a touchdown. Cotter Fordham gets in there, gets a hand on it. And then one of the other seniors, Luke Fondren, recovers it uh, four yards out and returns it for a touchdown. Yeah, we had one last week as well against LaGrange. Raz got through there and had one. <clears throat> and we mentioned what a good job Coach Vaughn does scheming these things up every week and finding holes in the protection and getting guys free. Uh, and this is the first one here uh, to put us up 13 to nothing. I think we, we missed the PAT after, but yeah. great to see senior linebacker Connor Fordham get the block and then senior linebacker Luke Finder pick it up and score. Again, go back to a minute ago, we were talking about one of our best players on special teams, and that's two of our mainstays on defense on there on the punt rush. Yeah, it was impressive. That did put you up 13 to nothing. Uh, and then you would get a second punt block out of Connor Fordham. This time recovered, uh, set you up, on, I believe it was on the two yard line. Uh, Avery Thomas with the recovery, and uh, this would set up another score. Yep, second block here by uh, by Connor that sets up the score uh, early in the third quarter. Uh, so him making another big play there for us. But what's exciting is you mentioned those two freshmen who've been honored all year. Well, Avery Thomas is an outstanding young freshman uh, defensive back. We've mentioned that group a lot and uh, excited to see him get in there and, and make a play as well. Yeah, that set the Blazers up on the two-yard line. One play, Colby Blunt takes it in from two yards out. Another rushing touchdown for him. He already has broken the single-season rushing touchdown record. He has now tied Brad Foley's career rushing touchdowns record. He's got a game to go this year, and he's got another year. Uh, so he's going to put up some ridiculous numbers, but he punches in here to tie the record. Yeah, excited for Colby here. One, one play and done. Once we get the ball inside the five, it needs to be one play and done. So the offense really responded here and poked it in and took advantage of the, the special teams play. Excited to see some guys excited on the sideline. That was the they were Our sideline had as much energy and, and, and juice as the guys say as we've had all year. Mm -hmm. You threw out a tight game, and that was really fun to see. But uh, excited for Colby time that record. Hopefully he'll break it this week. And like you said, he's got a whole year to play. So uh, yeah. <laughs> that thing may be hard to catch for somebody for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's put up some ridiculous numbers. A touchdown in every single game this season. Uh, Multi-touchdown games uh, a lot uh, a lot of the time as well. Devin Daniels, a uh, running back that we talk a lot about as well. Uh, you've got kind of that three-headed monster in your backfield. And here's Devin Daniels breaking free for a 17-yard carry. Yeah, at this point, it's late in the third quarter. We're up two scores. It's 20 to 7. Our defense is playing lights out. Yeah. You know, and <clears throat> obviously, every time the offense takes the field, we want to go down and score. There's yeah. no question about it. But at this point, I've had a lot of confidence in what our defense was doing. Um, I thought it would be tough for them to get three scores to take a lead. So, one thing we really wanted to do was grind out the clock, just get back to basics, and just pound away on them. Uh, and then Devin goes in, relieving Colby a little bit to get a nice game for a first down to, to move the chains and, and keep the clock running. Uh, in our favor. Yeah, Devin's a really talented runner, does a nice job here, just finds the hole, then cuts it back up the middle for a big gain. Uh, you mentioned that you kind of bled the clock. Brevard did late on get a little bit of a drive going to try to make it a one-score game. Here they are going for it inside the three-yard line. This is, a, uh, I believe it was fourth and two. They actually could have got a first down without scoring a touchdown here. Going for it on fourth down, uh, a huge stop. This is Corey Tolliver, Christian Lewis teaming up. Uh, you, you've made a couple of goal line stands this season that have been real influencers in, in how the game finishes up in this 
Memphis has won as well. Keep it a two-score game in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it doesn't matter how far they drive down the field. If they don't score, it doesn't count. Yep. You know? So <laughs> they did put together a pretty good drive here late, and good to see uh, Christian Lewis and Corey uh, get that thing stuffed up there and played it exactly like they should. And, again, you see a lot of energy and excitement coming off the sideline there. Uh, big, big stop. As I mentioned, it was late in the game. I didn't think they could get three scores. If they got one, I feel st still felt like we were in pretty good shape. Uh, but them getting the stop there definitely helped us out. Yeah, and you know, we get another fourth down stop in the fourth quarter as well. This time, Connor Fordham, Luke Fondren teaming up once again. Uh, this was another big stop. And just being able to keep keep these drives from resulting in points uh, really was the difference, is, is being able to keep Brevard out of the end zone. Yeah, this one's late in the fourth quarter. Uh, this one's a little bit more comforting for me because it's on the other side of the 50. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's nice to see them get the stop, get the offense back uh, to eat some clock and get this thing out of here uh, so we can uh, – put it to zero on the clock and go home. Again, just the, the guys on the sideline, just really exciting to watch them. And uh, just the, the way they stuck together, it was really neat to see them mature as a football team in a tough, hard-fought game on the road. Yeah, and then this is what you want to see as you wrap up the game. Final couple of plays we'll look at. Devin Daniels, uh, a 10-plus yard run here. Uh, this is just eating up yardage, eating up clock, and keeping Brevard's offense off the field uh, as you guys uh, try to chip away at the time and, and walk away with that 27, yeah. 27 win. <clears throat> Again, big play by Devin here, just helping us grind it out. He only had three carries in the game, which is really, really low for him. Yeah. Uh, as you look at our stats, we only had 62 plays, I think, on the day, which is really, really low for us. But in theory, we lost two and a half possessions because our special teams were so good. Yeah. You know, the defense or the, the punt block blocks a punt for a touchdown. The defense goes right back, so you lose a possession on offense. Uh, then they're in the third quarter. They block a punt. We score in one play. You lose another possession on offense. And then the long touchdown that you see earlier to Jacoby yeah. James Grace was only a three-play drive. Yeah. So plays are low because of good things, you know, yeah. but it did limit some guys like Devin uh, and Deontay Gallish all get the number of carries they usually get. But when we called on them, they were ready and got us some good first downs. Yeah, your three scores uh, combined four plays across those three scores, which that's is right. really, really yeah, – uh, right. we'll call that really efficient is what we'll <laughs> that's, call that. That's efficient. Uh, and then to wrap things up, Kobe Blunt, uh, a big first down run here, and this kind of helped seal it. Uh, you were able to bleed the clock the rest of the way and, and walk away with your eighth win of the season. Yeah, so Colby here, just to talk about him for a minute, you know, he only had 66 yards, which is a solid day at the office, but for Colby, those are some really low numbers. Yeah. Statistically, Colby had his least productive game that he's had all year, but we gave him the player of the game on offense. Yeah. Because here late in the fourth quarter, we put it in the big guy's hands and just said, go get his first downs and grind it out. Yeah. So we gave him the player of the game based on his, his just fight and his grit and his effort yeah. as opposed to his stats. Stats are just secondary, but he did exactly what we asked him to do. And you see him here just twisting, turning, fighting, and clawing for every yard he can uh, just to keep the clock running and get a first down uh, and put the game away for us. So did exactly what he was coached to do regardless of the stats. Yeah, got a little assist there from Cole McAlpin, who right. I think turned him back the right direction. That's right. Uh, but a really impressive win. Um, and that was one thing that, that we have kind of talked about earlier on coming into this game, I guess last week, uh, where you've come off a couple of really big wins and you knew that Brevard was going to be a tougher test. And, and uh, do, do you think it takes an extra kind of gear in the mentality for guys to be able to not just win big, but also grind out these close games, which you've done a couple of times. Uh, you had Methodist earlier this year, which was a seven-point game. Uh, and then, of course, Brevard, which was a, a four-quarter four contest as well. Yeah, they're, they're of extreme value. Um, you know, our guys haven't had to play a four-quarter game for really, what, five weeks now, yeah. you know, I guess since we were at Methodist. So um, that was one thing I think we talked about on the show last week that we were a little concerned about was, you know, our condition and our ability to sustain for four quarters because we were putting people away so fast. Yeah. But I was really proud of the maturity our team showed in all three phases just to stay calm, stay ready, and just keep playing. And, and hopefully we need that down the road because you know, we've got a really tough Maryville team coming in this week and it, it probably will be another four-quarter game. Uh, and if we find a little bit of help along the way and find ourselves in the postseason, those will definitely be dogfight yeah. four-quarter games. So uh, the best way to learn how to win close games is to play in close games. So yeah. um, I think we grew a lot from it. It was a good day for us. Yeah, let's talk about Maryville because this is this is a tough game. You really end your season with two of probably the top four teams in the USA South. You were one of them, Huntington, the other one. Uh, finishing your season with, with two tough teams, and, and this Maryville team has been really, really good this year. Uh, can you talk about what it takes to go – 10 game season and finish at your highest level because I know that's something you preach a lot finishing the year uh, as the best football player that you've been the entire season yeah we've, we've talked to a lot our guys about constant continual improvement these last few weeks uh, and really it has all been geared towards this Maryville game because they are good um, they're an extremely well coached team extremely high powered offense they've yeah. got a freshman quarterback who should be the uh, freshman rookie of the year in the conference. We talked about Eli from from our team should have it on defense, but uh, this Bryson Rolling kids at Maryville is fantastic. And if yeah. people want to see an exciting, 
athletic young quarterback come out here Saturday. He'll be playing in the bowl yep. on Bell Haven's campus, and they are they are good and they're fun to watch. Uh, we'll have our work cut out for us. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm curious, kind of the mentality um, over the course of the season, because you know, frankly, uh, you played Huntington week three. Uh, you lost that game. Um, that put in a position where you were going to need some help to try to get back to the top of the USA South, and, and you still need some help to get back to the top of the USA South. Uh, but how do you, I guess, keep the drive going? Because because of how Division Three set up, um, you really you, you have to win your conference. If you don't, you're not really assured of anything. Uh, and it's incredibly hard. There will be plenty of 9-1, and 8-2 and two teams that are done after 10 weeks this year. Yeah. How do you keep that mentality with your locker, with your coaches, to say, hey, you know, the season's not over, and you know, it's been. I think I've from the outside, I've just been very impressed with the fact that uh, these guys seem to get better and better every week, even though they know that uh, at the end of the day, they don't really control the, the end of the season or what their destiny might, uh, might hold. Well, all we can control is what we can control, and that yeah. is getting better every week and going out and putting on a pr- uh, good performance, yeah. you know, and, and, and that's where that constant continual improvement comes in. We talk about whenever our last game is, if it's this week versus Maribel or if it's in six weeks in a national championship game, that needs to be our best performance because yeah. you're always looking to improve and get better. Um, and I think for our guys that's an easy thing to grasp because our success, though we've had three winning seasons now in a row, uh, to the D3 world is still relatively new. Yeah. You know, and I think our guys still feel like they've got a lot to prove. Yeah. Uh, they still feel like nationally there's still a lot of doubters out there. You know, as we've talked a lot about here, we feel like we can line up and play with anybody in the country at any time. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people across the country still don't believe that. They still think this is the Bellhaven of old, and it is not. You know, yeah. these, and so these guys uh, still have a massive chip on their shoulder externally and internally. Yeah. We still feel like we've got a lot of things to prove to people here in Jackson and the state of Mississippi and even on our own campus at times. So yeah. uh, the chip on their shoulder is still there and it's real and, and they've got a lot to prove. So motivation is not an issue there. Yeah, and that's, that's I just personally, that's been really impressive to me because I think it's easy to have a letdown after those games when you play such a big game early in the season uh, and you guys have gotten better and better every week. It doesn't take much to see uh, the talent that's on the team, but to see them play at such a high level this year, late in the year has been really impressive. Um, Let's talk about kind of just where the program is. Last week you popped up in the regional rankings, first time you've been in the NCAA regional rankings uh, since Bell Haven made the jump to Division III. Uh, that opens the door to a possible p- uh, playoff conversation. Obviously, uh, you'll be the first to say you got business to handle this weekend before yeah. you can even talk about that. Um, but to be you know, in a spot where you're getting some regional recognition, some national recognition that Bell Haven's never gotten before, uh, can you just talk about that for your program and, and where you see this kind of headed over the next you know couple of years uh, where you hopefully continue to climb and climb and and kind of ascend that national ladder? Well, one, it's a compliment to those 11 seniors and the work that they put in to put the program in that position. Um, So we all need to be very grateful for their work and sacrifice to help build the program to where it is. And it is exciting. It does uh, speak to growth and and the progression of our program, and we're really excited about it. Um, and it does put us in conversations we've never been in before, and that's the idea: is to continually grow your program and and be the best you can at whatever you're doing. Yeah. You know, um, so we're excited about it. Um, you know, one thing it tells us is we've still got a lot of work to do because we're still kind of at the bottom of that conversation. We've got to push our way up to where that is just a normal that we're always in that conversation. So, um, but it's a good step, and it shows we're going in the right direction, and and we're excited about that. Yeah, it's been really impressive year. Uh, let's wrap up talking about the seniors because it is senior day. Uh, they've obviously had really uh, stellar careers, and you mentioned started the, their careers. Some of those guys that have been here since the beginning of your tenure started four and eighteen. They can win Saturday. They'll be twenty three and twenty two. Uh, can you talk about what they just did meant to your program? Because I know you, you go through the list of guys, and, and you've got some guys that are brand new, like Paxton Branding. Um, he was a transfer that came in this year, but you've got some guys like Charlie Blue and Luke Fonder and Connor Ford and Ben Owens that have been around this program a yeah. long, long time. Um, and to have that continuity of guys who are saying, I'll be here when it's two and eight, I'll be here when it's eight and two or nine and one or whatever it ends up being, um, that just seems like it would mean a whole lot to the other guys in the locker room, the freshmen, the sophomores coming in, seeing those guys believed enough to stick around yeah. through the thick to be here or through the thin to be here when you know things are going really well. That's right. Well, those, those guys who have been here from day one, you know, we've also joked with Charlie. He's one of the first guys that I recruited when I got here. Yep. And his mom always reminds me when they came on their visit, I didn't have any hang, hanging on the walls <laughs> in my office, you know, just boxes in the floor. Yep. Um, but they saw something they believed in. They wanted to be a part of it and they've stuck through it through thick and thin, as you mentioned. And, 
you know, those guys, they're Bellhaven to the core, and they yep. will be for the rest of their life. You know, and that's it's pretty neat and pretty special uh, to think that we've put together, regardless of what happens this week, we're going to do everything we can to go beat Maryville, but regardless of what happens this week, in the 25th year of Bellhaven football that we spent all year celebrating, we pop up with the best team in school history. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. Um, and I think that's one thing that that group of seniors wanted to do for the alums is honor them with that. Um, and they know, too, that here in a few short weeks, whenever it is over for them, they now become a part of that group. Yep. You know, so they want to be able to say, hey, when I was there, this is what we did. This is the standard. You guys in the future, you better live up to it. Mm -hmm. You know, so those guys will be the rest of their life right here on this campus, being a part of it, being contributors um, and the biggest fans this place has. So that's pretty cool that we've been able to kind of tie those things together um, and build for the future on and off the field. Yeah. It's been cool because this is this is kind of the first senior class that I've been around for the majority of their career. Uh, some of them came in in 2018 when you got here. I got here in 2019. Right. Um, so I've gotten to see you know the front end of their careers and and what they're doing at the back end. It's been really cool to see them grow and mature, um, not only as football players but off the field as leaders and as men. So that's been really really fun. Um, be sure to come out Saturday against Maryville. It's a big time game, but it's also a big time day with Senior Day, uh, recognizing guys who have made such an impact on this program. Hopefully, continue to finish on a strong note and uh, continue to add to what's been. Uh, one of the best years in Bellhaven uh, football history. But, Coach, uh, we appreciate you taking the time. Good luck this weekend, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, Saturday's win. Thank you.